Okay, so this lesson is actually going to be a little bit of review and incorporating some new ideas into it. We have talked a lot about the physical uh, properties and physical changes and chemical properties and chemical changes. And we're going to use that information now to help describe chemical reactions. But first, let's get a little bit of an overview. Let's just refresh our memories. We know that um, when we're talking about changes in matter, they can be physical or chemical. Physical, we're altering the appearance. We are not changing the identity of the substance. Chemical, uh, we are changing the identity of the substance. We are combining things and we are getting something that is completely new and different. Now, let's add some terminology to this. The substances that undergo the changes are called the reactants. So what we're starting out with are called the reactants. What we end up with are called the products. And of course we know that any reaction is going to abide by the law of conservation of mass. Matter cannot be uh, created or destroyed. Uh, we're just changing the state or the compound or where we can find that mass. But all of that mass is still there, just in a different form. Okay, now chemical changes occur when bonds between atoms break and new things form. So unlike with a physical change, during a chemical change, again, we are getting something new. And if we look at the examples that are there, a raw egg becomes a cooked egg, cannot reverse that. Cake mix becomes a cake, cannot reverse it. Paper becomes ash if it's burned, again, cannot be reversed. And of course, steel will rust and you cannot reverse that reaction. So we're getting something new. Now, changes, there, there are a couple different ways that energy can be incorporated into, this, into these reactions. Sometimes energy is being released and sometimes energy is being taken in or is needed for the reaction. In an exothermic reaction, energy is being released. It's usually in the form of heat or light, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And in that type of reaction, uh, for instance, between oxygen and fuels, uh, we get fire. Um, so if we're burning wood or oil, we see those um, reactions taking place in the form of the heat and light that's being given off. Now, sometimes, like I said, energy needs to be absorbed and for, uh, for that reaction to take place. That is an endothermic reaction. It is absorbing the energy from around it and it actually causes the surroundings to become cooler because that energy is being used to help the reaction move forward. So when baking soda is mixed with vinegar, it actually feels cold to the touch, and that is an endothermic reaction. Okay, now one way that we can detect that a chemical reaction um, is taking place is that we get new and different products. Um, out of the reaction. We can get a precipitate. We can get gases. Um, both of those are evidence that a chemical reaction has taken place and that new substances are being produced. Okay, so what is a precipitate? That is a solid that forms from liquids during a chemical reaction. So a solid is actually forming as part of the reaction. And gases, we, we see when we mix uh, baking soda and vinegar, it bubbles. Um, and that bubbles, or those gases, um, are evidence that a chemical reaction is taking place. Now, color change, not always, but a color change can also mean that a chemical reaction is taking place and that a new substance is formed. But we cannot always rely on color change. Now, we can illustrate these different types of reactions by using what is called a chemical equation. Just like we have a shorthand way to write out um, the names of a compound, for instance, sodium chloride, we can say NaCl, we use those chemical formulas. We can use a chemical equation to show a reaction taking place. Again, we're using those symbols instead of words. Um, they're shorter than sentences, but they contain all the information that we need 
to summarize what's taking place in that reaction. Now, we talked about how to write formulas, and we know that the chemical formula for a compound is just a combination of the symbols that represent the elements in that compound. And of course, we have our subscripts that show us the ratio of the different elements in that compound. So CO2, carbon dioxide, uh, tells us that in each carbon dioxide molecule, there's one carbon and two oxygens. Now, what the chemical equation tells you um, is that the substance that we are starting out with in the reactant, reaction, which again are called the reactants, and the new substances that are being formed at the end, which again are the products. So it shows us exactly what's happening, and again, the ratios of what we need. Reactants are always written on the left. Then we have an arrow, uh, which means yields, and the products are written uh, to the right. Not right, but R-I-G-H-T of the arrow. When there are two or more reactants or products, they're just separated by a plus sign. So here we can see we have two hydrogen molecules plus an oxygen mo molecule. Both of those are our reactants. And when they combine together, we yield, or we end up with, two water molecules as our products. Okay, now, we're going to be using those coefficients, or those numbers in front, like the 2 here in front of the H2, and the 2 here in front of the H2O. Those are coefficients. And those tell us how many molecules of that compound we have. Not just the ratio of the uh, elements in the compound, but how many molecules of that compound we have. So how many molecules of nitrogen and how many molecules of hydrogen are we going to need to form ammonia? So see if you can do this. So again, it's all about ratios. If we look at what we have, it really just, it, all it's telling us is the ratio of how many nitrogen molecules we need plus how many hydrogen molecules we need to end up with those ammonia molecules. Whoops. Okay, so one N2 plus three H2s equals two NH3s. Not sure what happened to that three. But what this tells us is one nitrogen plus three hydrogens is going to give us two ammonias. We multiply those coefficients. Okay, and again, it's all about conservation of mass. Um, all about how whatever we start out with, we will end up with. It does not have to be in the same form, but it's going to be there. And this goes all the way back to 1774 with Antoine Lavoisier, who said that matter is not created or destroyed during a change. All the atoms that are present before a change are going to be there after the change. And that's why we have to balance these chemical equations. We can't just do away with an atom or a molecule. It's going to be there. It's just going to be in a different form. And so uh, when we're balancing equations, you write the equation. Again, you write the correct chemical formulas for both the reactants and the products. And you can see that we're working with water here. You count the number of atoms of each element on each side of the equation. Don't forget what those subscripts are telling you. Okay, they're giving you the ratio of the elements in the compound. And then you're going to use those coefficients to balance the atoms. Um, and that number is a number, again, that you're going to put in front of the chemical formula. And it's going to tell you how many molecules of that particular compound you have. So balancing, and it is a back and forth type of thing. Um, when we balance the oxygen atoms, the number of hydrogen atoms then become unbalanced. And so we might have to go back and forth on each side of the equation a couple of times in order to get the right 
balanced equation, but that's okay. Okay, and look back and check. Is the number of atoms of each element equal to the uh, number of elements in the products? So do the number of reactants match up with the number of products? If they have, then the law of conservation of mass has been followed and your equation is balanced. So now you try a couple of these. Go ahead and write those down. Try them. I know they're hard. Here are the answers. See if you can do it. We're going to work on this in class. Don't, no stress, okay? And just see if you can come up with the correct formulas. Okay, guys. Good night.